Well, um, hello everybody. It's good to see all of you. Um, if you're on Zoom, you'll be able to ask myself or joining us today is Kathleen. Kathleen is from Texas. She's a brand ambassador. Um, you've probably seen her. She's on just about every single week. So it's great to have her in the studio today. Um, you can ask questions. Is it okay, Kathleen, if people ask you questions directly? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, and um, I'll ask Anna and Gabriel and Giovanni um, to uh, bring across any questions on Facebook until I can uh, get my Facebook working here. So please ask questions directly. And with that, Kathleen, welcome. Thank you. It's so wonderful to be here, John. I'm excited. Awesome. It's, it's yeah. great to have you. Thank you. Um, so you have all your, your information I saw was posted on site, and we're going to see a brief slideshow um, that you're going to comment on, okay. and then we'll ask questions on the other side. How's that? That sounds wonderful. I'm ready. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ethel. Let's share screen. And do we see this now? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So make sure to follow Kathleen's socials. She's in Facebook. She's also in Instagram. And more importantly, to follow uh, Kathleen and learn from her, you can proceed to check her website. She does uh, have free classes every Saturday, as you can see here. And all you need to do to check the other schedule is to scroll down so that you'll see the calendar like that. Great. The next couple yes. of slides, Kathleen, um, are your sample artwork. So let's begin yes. with this one. Okay, thank you. This is a painting I did uh, when I worked at University of Texas. Right outside my office was a planner of um, blue bonnets and then the red ones came up and the white ones came up and everybody couldn't believe that the University of Texas had um, um, a planter of red, white, and blue uh, blue bonnets and um, this painting ended up making quite a splash there so that was it was fun and um, one of my favorites. This is fabulous, this is fabulous, I love it. Thank you, thank you. And uh, this, I was making jokes about uh, a mop watercolor brush uh, being my favorite and how I like to listen to Sarah Bareilles sing Brave. And this is a painting that I did um, that is a um, visual of that song to me. So, um, you know, as an artist, I don't always have the confidence to do that picture that's in my head, but um, I came pretty close to it on this one. So thank you. And red poppies are just important um, around here in Texas where I live. These flowers come up and it's just a, a field of, um, of red um, continuous blooms and and they're paper thin and you can't pick them. They don't, they don't hold any shape if you pick them. Um, but they're very strong when they're out in the field in the in the wind. They're just beautiful flowers. So I've painted them a lot, almost as much as blue bonnets. And um I moved from Oklahoma to Texas. And uh, when I lived in Oklahoma, my dad worked for Cattlemen and had a lot of different um, cat, a lot of different cattle. We um, people owned all different kinds, but we had a pasture of longhorns, and those longhorns would just stand and look at you. And I just thought they were so beautiful um, and so smart. And when I moved to Texas, um, one of the first things I saw were cars parked on the side of the road and everybody outside of their car is taking pictures of the longhorns standing there looking at them, ha taking, having their picture taken. And I named this painting Together We Stand. And um, it was just a lot of fun. It, this was actually a, a painting that was entered into a contest for a billboard. So it was a rather large painting that could be um, 
uh, displayed that way, but it was not chosen as one of the billboards. Uh, but that was okay. I didn't, that was just an opportunity I took. Now this painting has a lot of story behind it. Um, um, I was approached by um, a hospital in Cedar Park. They were preparing to have a children's wing and they wanted a mural in the children's room. And um, I had done murals before, but my shoulders weren't gonna be able to paint this huge mural. It was, well, it was not that huge. It's um, 10 feet by 20 feet uh, was what the, is wall, the wall is. And I said, I can paint the painting and we can have it created into wallpaper. And so this, painting is um, a mural in a children's um, area in a children's wing at the hospital. Yes, there's a, there's a photograph of the, of the painting on the wall. And I'm extremely proud of this. Um, um, being in the, and, and, you know, having a contribution in something so important as um, in a children's hospital is, um, I, it's it motivates me to just continue working as an artist, uh, having something to give like that. And again, um, um, I just I've painted cattle all my life, and it's greatly appreciated in Texas. So I continue to paint it. And then um, Bessie in the blue bonnets is the longhorn that's in the right hand corner. Um, laying in the blue bonnets with the cactus. And it's what everybody wants to see is uh, the Texas Longhorn with the blue bonnets and the cactus. So that one was kind of like for everybody else. <laughs> and this is how I learned to paint. And I, I learned when I was, um, I started taking art lessons when I was 12. I had a a reading disability, actually a learning disability. And at 12, I still didn't know how to read. And my dad um, knew how much I loved art. I loved Rembrandt. For some reason or other, I'd seen a book um, open to a page that it looked like um, the cloak was real velvet. And so I reached out to touch it and I just couldn't believe that anybody could make it look real. And so I um, uh, just started paying attention to art books uh, the other one that Rembrandt meant so much to me was I turned a page and I looked all around me to try to figure out where the light was coming from. Um, and so this was something my dad really paid attention to. So he provided a way for me to have art lessons when I was 12. And I was taught to sketch with watercolor with a watercolor brush. And um, then the next opportunity I had was with a, a well-known oil painter that lived in the town I was grew up in. And she taught me to plan all my oil paintings first in watercolor. And so this is a painting of a, um, back then we called it a bulldogger. I think they're called steer wrestlers now. But this is how, if you have a cow that needs to be doctored um, and they have th horns and you've not um, been able to really handle that cow because you have a large herd of cattle. You get on a horse and you get off of the horse by putting your hands on the horns and riding the cow until you can turn the cow, cow's head and that brings them to the ground. And then, then that cow can be doctored. So it um, really has more of a purpose than just a rodeo show for people to see. And um, I grew up going to rodeos. And so I kind of wanted to do this painting, um, just communicating something that was real important uh, as part of my life growing up. And um, I planned it out well first in watercolor and then took it into water, into oil painting. And I had several people tell me that if I put one more brush stroke on this painting, that cow was gonna come right off of the, off of the uh, uh, and that's when I stopped. I knew that was time to call a stop to that one. So thank you. Awesome. Yes. So do I get to paint now? 
oh, if you want to start painting now, that's great. We can ask you questions as you paint. That'd be certainly, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay. okay, thank you. I will. So I, use... I didn't know there was. Go ahead. Oh, I didn't know there was red poppies in Texas. I was in Bulgaria, and they were everywhere. Oh my goodness! I can see them close to home too. That's awesome. Yes, um, yes. In um, we have Georgetown has what's called a um, their red poppy festival. It's one of the largest festivals, uh, last, largest um, small town festivals. So I use a uh, camera um, to teach with its, um, um, gives you this view, let me see here. I like to make sure everybody can see both my hands, um, which I think you can. Um, and this is my Daniel Smith card. And this is a palette of Daniel Smith colors I've um, the only check color that I've completely replaced um, is a transparent brown oxide is just such a wonderful dark brown that I no longer use burnt umber. But outside of that, all of these colors are on this palette. And then I've added more um, new Daniel Smith colors is just more than we can resist. And if I can work it into um, teaching with it it finds its place here the colors that you see there by themselves are ones um that i that i use that way just really um strong and uh, right here i have ultramarine blue and i also have phthalo blue red shade together and that is a constant reminder of um how i how Honestly, I do it this way so my students are reminded how strong of a color phthalo blue red shade is. Um, I, you know, I want you to ask any questions you have. Um, I might forget to paint and talk all the time, um, or I may talk all the time and paint. But um, regardless, please interrupt me if you have any questions. I'm accustomed to talking while I paint to my students. So, and I am doing this freehand. Um, I'm this, the paper is uh, cold press, Fabriano Artistico, um, Fabriano's Artistico, 100% cotton. And this is the extra white paper. Um, and um, I was also taught to be very uh, loose with everything. Um, both my instructors were um, impressionistic painters. Um, but over the years, I have become, um, I don't think it's really, um, I think it's habit um, of putting my hand down on the paper. But this is one of those times that do as I say, not as, do as I say, not as I do, because I will find myself putting this part of my hand down on the paper um, while I'm painting. I think maybe also because of the size I'm painting on today. Kathleen? Yes. Um, as you're painting now, uh, we it seems like it's uh, just flat on you. On, on your legs, yeah? It is. Uh, is I that how, is, is, paint is on that my how, lap. Is, is that how you would normally paint? Or uh, it, it's just convenient for this particular painting? Yes, thank you for asking that. I, um, I painted every day during my commute to and from my job for about five years on the bus. And I got, I, I sort of invented this um, canvas board with a palette connected to it that way so that um, it could, I could keep everything contained and right there with me. And I just, I've done it that way for so long that it's, it's hard to change uh, my habits on um, how I do it. So uh, yes, this gives me the most control 
and um, it's just what I like. Um, mm -hmm. And I can paint any place that I can find some place to sit down. Kathleen, are you painting from a uh, photo reference? I am not. This is out of my head. Um, I will admit I've I've done a lot of preparation for today. So um, it's pretty solid in my in my imagination at this point. But um, I really had to um, be certain. So here, something that's real important to me is keeping a clean palette, which um, um, it doesn't seem to be everybody's habit at all. Um, but I, I put my brush in the wrong color if I don't. So did I answer your question? Sorry. No. Yes, did I? Did. Thank you. Uh -huh. uh, there was a question in the chat. It was, how do you have your um, palette connected to your board? Is it magnets or is it glued? It's Velcro. Nice. It is very nice. I take advantage of, of um, what's available to me. Kathleen, you do not wash your brush. You, you just clean it up in, in, in a towel. I do. Um, the, it's a water brush. And um, um, I, I hold on to the towels for much too long sometimes. The um, um, brush, you know, has its own water in it. And I, I painted on the bus for so many years. This became my habit. Um, and people watched me paint. Uh, everybody on the bus at one time or another would sit down with me and um, ask me questions. And sometimes they'd even tell me what I was doing wrong. That was always an interesting experience. But um, it, it made me a better person because I found out all that was really going on was this person just kind of wanted to participate with art and they didn't really know how. Um, but I also found out how many people wanted to learn how to paint. Um, so it was it was um, wonderful. But uh, had it not been for these brushes, I would have never um, been able to do that. Um, because on a city bus, you just don't take a cup of water and try to balance it on your hip, on your knee and and do all of that. Um, so the and it was a um, Pentel water brush that I first found. I actually found these brushes in an art supply store in London when I was there, um, um, you know, actually traveling with a friend. So I had a lot of extra time. I was um, she was there on business. And um, so I bought water brushes and I was able to ease more easily paint on the trip. Um, I and I just have been really, really happy ever since with uh, the water brush. We have a question on Facebook asking, do you always start with the water brush? Uh, always. Um, I uh, probably don't always do. Oh, you, you mean rather than sketch first? Maybe. Um, Okay, so I uh, I find out that um, I really enjoy going back and painting with regular brushes often. Um, so I don't always do anything. And um, when I am painting out of my imagination, most often I go straight to the paper with the brush. Uh, yes. So... Um, and that is when I'm almost always, um, well, that's, that's not true. I paint with regular brushes um, often, uh, but I teach with the water brush. I have students that they choose to paint with regular brushes, um, even learning from me with the water brush. So to me, they, they translate uh, very well. And um, sketching 
is kind of confining to me. Um, I don't uh, do a lot of sketching anymore. Carol, do you have a question? Carol, you have your hand up. You can ask your question if you like. Hi, I had to figure out how to unmute. Um, this is great, being able to ask questions live. Um, I'm very new to watercolor and I have a palette similar to yours that it is, um, you know, uh, portable. And so I've watered my colors and I've been reading on how to set up my palette, where to put my colors. And the thing that I've read and I see that you do it differently is to keep like all the yellows together and have them in a certain order, like the warm colors then go into the you know cooler colors. But I see you have yellows in different places and blues in different places and reds. So do, is, do you have a um, logic for the way you have your colors set up at all or? Yes, um, thank you for asking that. Um, um, the, um... I think how a artist sets out sets their palette out is very individual to all of us. Now, how we teach may um, be different than how we do it um, in our studio uh, for our own uh, purposes. I I actually can't. Uh, speak for anybody but myself, but you might consider um, um, the possibility that um, learning about your warm and cool colors is so important that it would be wise to start that way always, um, I suspect, um, but it isn't the way I learned. Um, and my um, my reason for setting the palette out the way it is has everything to do with the way I teach, but it is also the way I paint. So um, the colors on the right side are primary and secondary colors. And I use the Hansa yellow uh, light as the yellow and quinacridone red is the red and then I like the two blues because artists or students learn about uh, the light you know I mean it's hard for a student to learn how to do a wash and um, and so I really like manganese blue hue because they don't have to work at it they there's a it's a nice wash just the way it is um, but on the other hand thalo blue red shade is um, you know, oh my gosh, I've just ruined my painting. Look how bright this color is, how strong it is. And if I teach that right off the bat, we don't have that kind of an experience. And um, and so then going on, the purple, the green, um, the orange, and then I always add in the quinacridone, burn orange and the indigo instead of this is not black, this is indigo. And that is... Um, continuing so yellow and purple are um, are complements so this is a very teaching palette on this side for me um, also it's a little bit old-fashioned I guess to go back to the primaries and the secondaries and my students very seldom hear me talk about um, warm and cool colors it's more like uh, what do I do with this color? And I, I like to get them away from uh, what colors do you use to paint a poppy? Because, um, oh my goodness, a poppy can have so many more colors in it than, you know, the one red I have in my palette. Um, and try to take them more into how to use the colors that are, that are in their palette. Um, um, and I do have a tendency to teach people how to make the watch um, when you ask a question. So um, um, I, I appreciate you asking, asking the question, but I hope I don't overdo the answers. So thank you. Oh, not at all. Thank you. Um, that makes sense. 
uh, the teacher did not recommend um, black or indigo or Payne's gray as part of my palette. And I don't know why, because I haven't started my class yet. But how do you use that? Um, black or um, say that again, which three it's colors? Indigo. Um, well, I was thinking you were using indigo as like you would use um, black or lunar black or Payne's gray or, but maybe that's not why you have indigo on your palette. I was just saying that my instructor gave me the basic colors, but didn't mention using either black or Payne's gray or anything like that. Right. So, um, Okay, so again, I said I was very um, old fashioned and this is another example of that. When I first started learning, we did not have a tube of black. Um, that was just unheard of. And, um, and so I was taught to mix blacks with um, the, uh, you know, primarily we would, we would use, um, um, Right now, I can't even, well, something like quinacridone, burnt orange, and, uh, and blue would be how you would make. Well, to me, indigo is um, easier and faster and can be used as black, but it also makes such a beautiful wash color. Um, the, uh, there's so much color in it where in the black, it, it sometimes comes across as flat. And, um, and so I like to teach students how to, um, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to put a little bumblebee in here and we'll just use the indigo um, for one of my favorite purposes for it. Um, and that is for um, a bee wing. <laughs> so, um, the um, um, so, but honestly, uh, indigo can be used um, extensively for. Um, a, I mean, it's a it's a shadow color. It's it, there's a lot of of uh, things that you would not use for black. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I think I'm going to add indigo and I hope my questions aren't too elementary because there might be some very experienced people on this call, but thank you. Well, no, absolutely. Because, um, I mean, you, your questions are wonderful. So, uh, please know that, um, I love to teach and it's the beginner that I, um, probably beginner, maybe to intermediate that, that really, um, but the way, the reason I paint the way I do is because people watch me and think, oh my goodness, I think I can learn from, from her. And um, that is, um, you know, really some of my best paintings are, I shouldn't say best, uh, most well-known, most appreciated paintings are of this very style. Um, and so simple is sometimes just absolutely exactly what we need to learn. And so I appreciate your questions a lot. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh-huh. Kathleen? Yes. Um, I would like to just uh, take a step back um, before Anna asks this question, but why do you feel like manganese is uh, an easier color to do a wash? It is um, uh, so far here. I'm going to look at the legend on here. Yes, it is a totally transparent color. And that is the key reason why. Um, I mean, if I'd said that and I hadn't looked and been wrong, I would have been much too embarrassing for me. Um, but, um, you know, I knew it was fully transparent. So, um, but it's, a wash is just a foundational to every watercolor painting. Um, and um, new students have a tendency to want everything to look, you know, the cover and filled in. And um, they, the white space is not, um, um, 
appreciated in um, like it should, like I think um, a watercolor painting has the vibrancy. I mean, John, you entered, you explained that to us yesterday of, of why the vibrancy of um, um, brilliance. I think we used the word brilliant, didn't we? Luminant, luminous, brilliance, yes. Uh -huh. Glow. Glow, right. There we go. That's that's the word. Um, and, um, and I do need somebody to tell me um, my, how much time I have every once in a while. Okay. Um, 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay. I'm, I'm good. A lifetime. A lifetime. <laughs> a lifetime. <laughs> it should be long enough. <laughs> Is that Indian paintbrush? Uh, yes, that is Indian paintbrush. Yes. Uh, um, thank you. Um, the um, um, the Texas landscape is um, filled with uh, these colors. This one is um, the clover. And uh, early, early spring, um, the, um, see, I don't, I don't, um, I have much more I want to do on this one, but uh, early, early spring, this, these are the flowers that just cover our landscape here in Texas. And um, it's so wonderful when the um, Indian paintbrush comes up and um, the contrasting colors with the blue bonnet and, um, um, and I, in a little bit, I'll, I'll put in a few, um, I think they're called Black Eyed Susan, uh, just a little yellow flower with the brown center so that we have a little more yellow on here. Um, but one of the things, um, so John, where do you know the Indian paintbrush? Uh, just from traveling through the different states. Um, I've seen it as high up as in Canada. Oh, wow. Uh, they um, just stand out. Um, so beautiful to me and in Oklahoma where I grew up we did not have um, wildflowers like this in the spring um, we'd pull up to a pasture and there would be a few yellow flowers in it and I'd talk to my dad about how beautiful I thought they were and he'd say oh they're just awful they you know the cattle can't be on that pasture and and I would just think how sad it was that Oklahoma didn't appreciate <laughs> wildflowers. So um, I couldn't wait to paint for Texans. I was a botany major when I was in school, my first degree. And to go see flowers, the easiest place to see them was during uh, fire breaks or where a uh, road work was being done because they were kind of like the first things that came in. It, it just, you know, one side you see just major... Um, work on the road, but the other side, you see all this beauty of these really delicate, gorgeous flowers everywhere. Oh my gosh, that um, yeah, the, and they're um, 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 you know, their their season is so much longer than you can imagine, and you never can quite get back to that um, that view here in Texas. Um, when you start talking about the blue bonnets, um, uh, there's people that start shedding tears from memories and how they want to describe the beauty of certain times that they saw it. Uh, and I've seen blue bonnets that looked like a waterfall. They really mm -hmm. are an amazing um, um, view in the spring. Um, and we, as Texans, we we get in the car and we go we go look for the best blue bonnet field to have photographs taken of um, children and dogs and um, it's it's quite a strange phenomenon. <laughs> um, okay, so I don't know if you all have noticed, but I mix a lot of color on my on my painting and always have. And um, um, that the um, um, 
the importance of that um, with using Daniel Smith paint has just, um, you know, I haven't always had the range of colors available that I have now. And um, the colors that you can bring in um, to one flower is um, I just, I don't know, just so uh, to me, it's just an opportunity. You mean I have to quit now? I, you know, I can't just keep bringing in more flower colors is what it feels like when I, um, so now here's my favorite use of uh, the Thalo blue red shade is the line that I was always taught the line was what controlled the viewer's eye. So, um, that's why it um, is um, so important that you have a strong color like that on the palette. And um, now then for more opera pink. And it just, um, you know, Opera um, operas are are loud and have a um, you know get your attention and keep your attention and uh, that's exactly what opera pink does on a painting is um, it just lets the eye jump around and uh, see all of that, um, everything that's going on. Now I finish my paintings um, with ink and um, I have to look at um, everything for just a few minutes to make sure that um, I don't want, oh, I know I told you all I was gonna do some uh, Black Eyed Susan. And um, had I not taken a minute with uh, the intention of really looking at the painting for a minute, um, I would have forgotten um, about that. Um, and um, I, uh, all I need is for the painting to um, have enough time to dry so that I can put in the ink. And um, I think I'm ready for that. And sometimes I put the paint out on my palette and sometimes I go right into the paint. So I did spray my paint before I started but I don't spray my paper right before I started because I do want to be able to control the lines of um, the brush strokes. Kathleen? Yes? Um, I'm, I'm looking at your brush strokes uh, for a while. Do, do you... Um... Look at, at Sumi painting, Japanese painting. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very definitely. Yeah. Uh, this is my other favorite um, go to of, um, um, and then in, in the high school and college, I did a lot of pen and ink um, work and am very familiar with Daniel Smith's. Uh, walnut ink, um, you know, one of the most beautiful colors in ink, in my opinion. Say that again. Um, okay. <laughs> um, so I see that I left out. Um, um this 
blue bonnet didn't get any pink and so that's not okay we've got to do that and um the pink in the blue bonnet it actually indicates that the flower had not been um pollinated and it is the thing that attracts the birds and the and the uh, pollinators all the pollinators um and after it's pollinated that is white so um you know, I always tell my students less is more. And um, when it comes to adding the little bit of um, 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 pink, um, you know, we we would we can overdo it pretty quickly. So who asked the last question? Gabe, was that you or Ian or? Um, it will yeah. be. Ian, did I answer your question? Yeah, uh, I mean, you can clearly see that you've got a, a, a style of stroke that's similar to uh, Sumi, or, or is that the brush itself that uh, mm -hmm. particularly does that kind of style? Well, I, um, um, I probably, since I was taught to sketch with a watercolor brush, um, I probably did a lot of um, those sketch, those same lines. Um, and it was usually, um, you know, um, um, Jay talked to me cons constantly about three things. It was Jay Amelia was my first instructor. One of them was keeping the white space in your watercolor paintings. The uh, next one was how the line is what controls the viewer's eye. Um, you know, how quickly you can take somebody out of your painting altogether or, or send them back into the painting. And we did a lot of line, just brush strokes that um, he always wanted it to be attractive um, just by itself. And um, so that was, um, you know, um, I, I know I um, probably learned a lot um, by looking at um, the black. Okay, so that bumblebee was not the best one I've ever done, but we know what it is. Um, and um, the... Um, um, but I have just as much fun with um, this pen as I ever did um, with a brush ink pen. Um, Sorry, which pen is it again? Uh, this is a Finito. The, um, it is also a Pentel. And it's it says extra fine porous point pen, um, and it is not uh, permanent. If if I hit someplace wet, it would um, it would grab it and run with it. So you have to be careful with that. Yeah. So I don't know if can you all see what I'm doing here with the black strokes? I don't know whether the camera um, it picks it up. Yeah, picks it up. We have a question on Facebook asking, what is your favorite mop brush and the size that you use? Um, mop brush. Um, it is. Um, six is my favorite. Um, the, uh, actually, honestly, right now, it's the only one I own. Thank you. When I was on the bus one day, um, I was trying to paint a blackbird um, 
like I had seen um, outside my window at my office um, the day before. And there were two blackbirds and they looked like they were walking and talking with each other. Um, actually, um, one of them looked like he was listening and the other one was doing all the talking. And um, I really wanted to do that painting. Um, and the first blackbird I painted looked a little bit like a fat black robin. And um, a gentleman sat down with me and asked me what I was painting, which I was always kind of amazed that they, you know, you'd have something right there on your paper. And that would be the first question they ask. And, but, um, you know, I said, I told him I was trying to do the blackbirds uh, that I had seen. And, um, and, you know, he said, well, you really need to paint it this way. And he started telling me in, um, you know, my first reaction was, oh, my goodness, the nerve of him. Um, but, you know, I you can't say that to somebody that you're going to see every day for the next year um, riding the bus with him. And um, so I asked him if he was an artist and, um, you know, he said no, but, you know, anybody would know how to paint a, a bird. And, and so I just <laughs> swallowed my pride and um, um, began to listen to him and, and try to have as much conversation as I could about it. Well, um, the, by the time we finished, um, he thought he'd really shown me how to uh, paint because I was very successful at um, painting two blackbirds. And he was as satisfied with the painting as I was. And um, I just really realized um, from that experience how important it was that I let um, people really communicate with me about my art um, any way that they, um, you know, because honestly, he had to get up his nerve to come ask me, you know, come talk to me and, you know, ask if he could sit down and um, participate with me. But um, um, it, um, um, well, I don't know, that's, that's all. I just kind of wanted to share that story with you all about the bus because um the um when i quit letting what people said to me um about my art bother me um was when i really opened up the door to a lot more creativity and not being afraid of what other people might say to me um about my art and um um i just i think that's an important part of every Art career. Um, well, it certainly was in my career. Thanks for sharing that story as a uh, walking forward in the career. That's always helpful to hear those benchmarks. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for listening. Um, um, I think we we are uh, given lots of opportunities to be offended um, because uh, being an artist in front of people is uh, a vulnerable state. And, um, and I don't think people really realize um, how it seems to us. Um, and so if we could just hear what people have to say in a more um, uh, forgiving and, and accepting light, um, it would be healthier for all of us. So, okay, so Anybody now- A great teacher. <laughs> I recognize your voice, Sandra, thank you. Okay. Beautiful. I love the little bee, Kathleen. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. And it definitely has um, 
um, taking advantage of a lot of um, beautiful colors that Daniel Smith gives us to work with. So, and I honestly think we could have painted that whole painting. Maybe I would have needed more manganese blue hue, but this dot card has a lot of paint on it. And thank you, John, for that. Oh, you're so welcome. That's awesome. Oh. So did I finish early? You did. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Does anybody else have any questions? So I'm going to ask you one that we always ask, which how do you know when you're done? There's only one answer for me, and that's when you don't know what else to do. Because if you go painting on a paint painting, um, you know, that you have um, brought to a point that you stopped and you go painting before you are certain of what you are going to do, you're probably going to be sorry. So when you put brush to paper, it, it's a good idea to be intentional and know exactly why you want to do it. Thank you. I, I love that you didn't fill up the white space. I think I, I've, it's, that's really uh, very yeah. nice. Very yeah. nice to see. I heard, I saw someone wrote a... Go ahead. I saw someone wrote a comment asking about the black lines and they were asking if she outlined her stuff or how she kept from outlining. And I didn't hear her address that. And that's something that's really a challenge for me is to loosen up my black lines when I paint with you. So maybe you can yes. explain that a little bit because it yeah. does make a big difference. So the um, being taught that the line was the thing that really controlled the viewer's eye um, gave me like a license to be real loose with the paint. And sometimes I kind of feel like I try to make sense of the painting with the black lines because I know I can control the eye. And um, it's definitely not an outline. I mean, if you have, um, um, you know, like a cat's body or something, you might outline that cat's body. But um, the art is um, uh, all, it's all part of it. And to me, it's a sketch on top of um, the watercolor painting. And so um, to keep from outlining and to get better at, the black lines, I just recommend a lot of sketching, just a lot of sketching. And it doesn't matter whether you're using a pen or a, or a, or a, a pencil, uh, a lot of sketching, line drawing is uh, very effective with that for me anyway. Yes, thank you. Hi, Martha. Do you sometimes, do you sometimes uh put first the black lines and then the watercolor or always this way? Always this way, yes. Um, there are um, um, two paintings that I did not, um, uh, I have a painting of um, three burrows or um, donkeys. In my world, they were always donkeys. Um, that um, is one of my favorites. And it's, it's an exceptional drawing on top of a painting. Um, I mean, the drawing, the black lines could, um, uh, were, was really what it was all about. Um, but most often to me, it enhances the watercolor painting. I've got a, an interesting thought on how to loosen up with a pen. Um, if you were to use a, a, a dip pen, or I can't remember what the company's called, but the one called a few day pen. A uh, few. Which, is, which a, is a bent pen. 
a mm -hmm. what um i'm not i I'm, think I'm i think he's one. saying food a a brand yeah. f-u-d something food a few day yeah yeah i think that's what he's referring to um i'm not familiar with it um um it's, it's almost like a, a brush kit that bends oh okay <laughs> You know, I've tried with those with those pins. I have a few um, um, different brands. I've not paid that much attention to them, but um, the um, um, uh, I don't know the O three um, point is my favorite to work with most of the time. And mm -hmm. when I found this um, extra fine um the pores pin it feels the most like um i mean i i still um work with um the point you know on on this on occasion i don't have the control that i i used to have uh with it so it's it's not my favorite to do anymore um the um um the mop brush and um the indie ink pen um see look there's nothing beautiful about that but um um i didn't squeeze it first um but this this would be the brush that i would like to have the most control of um and I would like to be able to do all my black lines with it. So if I was going to practice sketching um, with uh, lines, it would be it would be a brush pen, and just staying with the point, this just the point of the brush all together. I believe uh, Faber Castell uh, do a set, and one of them is a, a brush pen. That might be uh, right yeah name. it's it is very familiar it's very um very similar to it um just on the subject of pens if you were to do a, a black bird what would you do the outlining in would it be silver mm, they um um the blackbirds i don't think i've ever put any black lines with them um but silver would be really nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Kathleen, I was just noticing that this with this pen, it seems a lot more subtle than the um, like with the micron pens that we use sometimes. Uh, the pen I used on this painting. Yes. Um, um, I don't, I don't know, probably, uh, they probably are different. Um, but, um, this is just really and truly when, um, see if I, if I taught with this, this pen, um, other students would use it and not realize that it's not permanent. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, if it grabbed, if there was anything wet on their painting and it grabbed it and then it ever all turned black, um, um, that wouldn't be the best of experiences. So um, I just, it's just my favorite, but um, I'll suffer the consequences if that happens to my paintings, because I know better. <laughs> Kathleen? Yes. I know that I enjoy uh, the permanent marker because sometimes I do go back and touch up and I've never made a mess because we use the permanent and that's a big plus, I think. Right. Right. I, I enjoy teaching with the permanent that we don't have to take that risk. Yes. So well, thank you. Well, all. I wanted to thank you. Thank you for joining today. It was wonderful. And thank you everybody for watching. You are wonderful. And look forward to seeing you next week. Okay. Um, wish you a, a, a great day and hope you can stay out of the heat. See yes. you all next week. All right. Thank, thank you, you for inviting me. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. All right, bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.